Assalamu alaikum. Uh, today, inshallah, we are going to uh, finalize our third uh, uh, topic in this chapter the cross cultural uh, management. After we see the cross cultural management and the uh, national culture, we will start with the impact of uh, culture on uh, management and global uh, management and uh, global corporations. Uh, let's quickly. Um, Remember uh, what uh, we studied in uh, the previous two topics. We talk about the cross-cultural uh, management. We see the uh, two, the definition of cultures and the uh, basic assumptions and values, beliefs, and preferences and behavior with some examples. And also the main four uh, dimensions of culture, the corporate culture, the industry culture, the professional culture, and the national or ethnic culture. Then we move to the next topic, the national uh, culture. We saw the main, uh, the four main streams of the systematic analysis of national cultural differences, ethnological uh, research, uh, sign and language uh, differences, and also the managerial uh, values uh, and uh, assumptions, um, the work-related value differences, and the uh, value orientation differences and also the management assumptions differences uh, then the third uh, mainstream was the country uh, clusters and uh, finally the economic uh, culture uh, so after this uh, uh, background we can see the impact of the culture uh, or the different cultures in the business uh, global business how can affect the management uh, system uh, so the effects of the cultural differences on the management of global companies are very pervasive as there is no aspect of corporate life that is not impacted by culture so there's six aspects of corporate life are uh, particularly strongly influenced by cultural differences like in the marketing and customer communications uh, human resources, multicultural teams, negotiations, uh, business practices, and so on. So marketing and partnership acquisition, uh, we have already talked about uh, these two uh, topics uh, in the previous uh, chapters. And when, uh, for the next chapter, we'll consider the human resources. So in this chapter, we'll focus on the teamwork, negotiations, and the business context. When we talk about the uh, teamwork, we have a multicultural teams in the global business. So in most activities, the global firms make use of teamwork, committees and task forces, cross-functional teams, etc. So many departments at corporate, regional or subsidiary uh, levels are staffed by managers of different nationalities and cultures. So given the variety of cultural uh, heritage, Communication and decision-making process can be uh, planted by cultural noise. Uh, so multicultural uh, teams can perform either significantly worse or better than uh, monocultural uh, firms. So we have uh, many types of uh, multicultural uh, uh, teams, as we can see here. The business, and the business development, we have members of different nationalities working on development launching a new product this is for the develop, uh, business development for the regional headquarters have uh, different functions to buy by different uh, nationals for regional coordination also for corporate headquarters the permanent or temporary assignment of executives and staffs of different nationalities having global responsibilities also for the joint ventures and alliances and partnerships the managers and employees assigned from different partners or an employee's pool. Finally, the task forces have multi-function, multi-country uh, teams in charge of a particular project. <clears throat> so, the performance of a multicultural groups is a function of three factors. The uh, multiplicity of uh, perspectives, which is the experiences and viewpoints increases the richness of information which is something positive. Second, the possible loss of cohesion owing to the maybe miscommunication, misunderstanding, and stereotyping. And third factor is the ability of team leader 
to combine the variety of perspectives and achieve group synergy. So the relative impact of these uh, three factors can lead to a polarized performance, as in interesting study made by German and American staff or teams, two researchers found that German rational analytical approaches to problem solving combined with the action-oriented, freewheeling, innovative approaches of American members contributed to a high performance. However, performance were poor when the team leader was not able to introduce team building procedures that facilitated information sharing and group reflection of cultural assumptions. So this is about the team building. Uh, so what about the negotiation? Negotiation, as we know, is a very critical uh, matter in the uh, global business or in business in general, but it's more critical when it comes to different uh, cultures and so on. So negotiations generally follow a sequential six-stage uh, chronology that, uh, for example, uh, started with the pre-negotiation uh, stage before the negotiation start. Each party prepares its negotiation strategy, then the climate setting or the environment, production of negotiators, greetings and physical context, then the uh, presenting, everyone uh, start to the agenda setting and opening statements and so on. And the most critical uh, stage is the midpoint bargaining as substantive debates and request of clarification, search for common ground and trial for concessions. Concessions, I mean, everyone have to leave something for the other uh, and so on. So at the end, there is the closure, is binding concessions uh, offered, binding the offer of concessions, and search for agreements, and final drafting and signing. And after the end, there is a post-negotiation. After the end of the negotiation, there is the ratification of the agreements by the corporate headquarters or by the government bodies, if there is a, a government uh, partner in the deal. So this is the general uh, meaning and stages of uh, negotiations. So what about the impact of the culture on negotiations? There is uh, many factors here. We have basic approach of business, central purpose of uh, negotiation, the selection of criteria, and so on. Uh, instead of uh, saying all this stuff, we can see them in uh, examples. It would be more useful. For example, we have a comparison here, the impact of culture on the negotiating behavior. We have an example here for a comparison between US and Japanese as uh, uh, two uh, totally different cultures. For example, a negotiation parameter like the basic approach to business in general. In the uh, typical American response, the transactional profit uh, oriented, they are detailed, uh, conscious, and legalistic. There is, this is the American approach, but in contrast, the Japanese, they are structured, strategic, and start, starting from trust, but they don't depend on the legal matters and so on. They uh, concern to the trust with the uh, counterpart. Another parameter is the central purpose of negotiation. For the American approach, they are reaching the agreement on a contract. But for the Japanese, the launching a long-term relationship. So they uh, look for long-term relationship, not only for uh, finalizing the negotiation with the agreement or contract. Also, the selection criteria for negotiators. In America, verbally uh, articulate uh, generalists' technical uh, competence uh, according to the rational abilities. But in Japan, they uh, consider the uh, rank, the position, according to the social competence. In the, uh, the another parameter, the appropriate number of negotiators in America, it is few number. But in Japanese, there are many uh, negotiators in order to demonstrate seriousness and for functional uh, coverage and including learning and experience and so on. Another parameter, the appropriate rule of lawyers in the negotiations. In America, lawyers are key participants. Maybe they are leaders or contract advisors, 
and drafts persons. But in uh, Japanese, there is no lawyers. They see them as uh, troublemakers. Uh, another parameter, the uh, attitude toward decision-making process and appropriate degree of delegation of authority to negotiators. In America, top-down decision-making, which means very high degree of delegation of authority. But in Japanese, it is consensual, which means middle-up decision-making, or there is little or no authority delegated to negotiators. Another parameter also, uh, the appropriate tool for negotiation and communication. The tool in American, uh, the, it is direct, informal, familiar, uh, egalitarian, and candid. But in uh, Japanese, it is highly indirect and uh, formal, more formal, and hierarchical and reserved. Uh, another negotiation parameter, the uh, negotiator's interest in personal feelings and values of counterparts. In America, it is little or none. There is no feelings or values for the counterpart. It is irrelevant or improper. Logic is more important than emotions. Issues more important than personalities. But in Japanese uh, culture, it is acute. Personal rapport essential to establish trust between the uh, counterpart. Another uh, negotiation parameter, the uh, appropriateness of socializing with counterparties. It is appropriate to socialize with the counterparty or not. In America, it is inappropriate, unacceptable, and risks a conflict of interest and loss of personal control. But in Japanese, it is highly appropriate and traditional behavior. Uh, it is also ritualized gift giving. We can give, give uh, gifts and souvenirs <clears throat> for the counterparties. Uh, there is also the attitude toward time during negotiations. In uh, American uh, approach, actually time, uh, they are actually uh, time conscious and uh, as the concept of money or uh, time is money, uh, also uh, impatient, but in Japanese uh, approach, it is uh, patience is the key. Also the attitude toward silence during negotiations. In America, it is strongly averse, uncomfortable, uh, fill the uh, void, but in Japanese, it is essential for the uh, quorum and for nonverbal communication and empathy. Uh, also, there is the reaction to cross-cultural signals. For America, uh, unaware or consider it uh, unimportant, but in uh, Japanese approach, it is aware and different. Uh, there is also another negotiation parameters like uh, the attitude toward uh, sequential bargaining and negotiating progress. In America, it is strongly attracted to both, but in Japanese, it is unimportant. Also, the attitude toward sharing information. In America, it is open and willing, no problem. But in, uh, in Japan, it is collect uh, it avidly, and, but uh, don't give it uh, out. Also, the attitude toward closure. For American approach, it is essential for successful negotiation, results-oriented, not process-oriented. But in Japanese, not necessary or even important. They look for the long view. Also, for the form of the contract. In America, it is the contract should be long and detailed, covering all the foreseeable and contingencies. But in Japanese, they prefer very short and limited to the just the general principles and affirmations. Finally, the uh, parameter of the commitment to the contract. In America, it is totally binding. But in Japan, it is weak, as they think that the relationship is what counts, not the document. And uh, inevitable changing conditions will uh, necessitate later amendments uh, no problem with that. So, uh, there is like uh, negotiators have to keep a checklist, uh, like understanding the cultural lens of the, your own position and your counterpart, uh, counter, uh, counterparties' position, or to list the negotiation items which risk being affected by cultural differences and anticipate counterparts' response 
and which are caused by mere business uh, divergence instead of cultural divergence and the items which are potential fits conflicts with counterparty let's take an example for the chinese business negotiation uh, styles uh, for example uh, we have large team value authority you cannot determine the authority of the leader or so they have large teams presence of technical people this is what uh, counts often with incompetent uh, interpreter uh, also they are uh, by best technology but show no appreciation for monetary value of knowledge uh, also they are more price sensitive uh, hierarchical uh, non-legalistic approach they rely on relationships like the Japanese also culture um, they play competitors off against each other they use a sweet and sour uh, approach uh, there is also the shaming technique point out mistakes by the other party uh, this is common in their negotiation style um, they're taking surprise actions, showing anger, um, friendship means obligation in their culture, and uh, also the concept of the richer partner bears the heavier uh, burden, and the mixed feelings, we have mixed feelings towards uh, foreigners, and finally the renegotiate re issue thought concluded. Then you think that uh, you are done or conclude uh, you reach a conclusion from this negotiation but you uh, surprised but chinese they uh, can uh, renegotiate uh, again the same issues that thought to be uh, concluded so this is the teamwork and this is and the negotiations in the uh, cross culture or different culture business management finally we have the business practices so business practice refers to the day-to-day -day interactions that managers experience in their dealings with customers, suppliers, partners, and government officials. Besides the negotiation styles described earlier, there is three categories of practices are impacted by the cultural differences, like the etiquette, the relations, and the competition. So let's start with the business etiquette. The business etiquette represents the set of rituals that take place when people communicate in business dealings. It includes the way people address each other's uh, speak, dress, eat, stand, sit, uh, gesticulate, pose, and deal with time. So what about the relations? They involve the way business transactions are established, whether personal relationships or legal or technical uh, matters are the prime ingredient of the transactions. We talk about engaging and emphasize on the relationship establishment and contracting emphasize on the overall agreement. Finally, the competition, which indicates how competitive advantages are obtained. In some countries, competition will be perceived and practiced as a fair game in which products, services, and performances are compared and the winner ultimately decided on. In the other countries, other criteria such as ethnic belonging family connections or political considerations can determine the winner when we talk about supplying and so on. So uh, let's end with some examples for this best, uh, business, uh, for the business practice in the different uh, cultures uh, context uh, for the uh, etiquette, relations and competition. For the etiquette, for example, we have the addressing, how to name the other person. In Malaysia, for example, nobility titles are proper form of address. They have their own titles. In France, people are addressed by their title like Monsieur, uh, Madame, and so on. In the United States, you can use the first name only, which is normal. In Japan, the exchange of business cards is critical. This is addressing how to name the other person. Uh, there is also uh, gesturing how to position oneself and how to use body language as for example showing the soles of the feet which is uh, offensive in arab countries when you put your uh, one feet on another uh, feet uh, this is uh, offensive in arab countries 
Also, also uh, the left hand shaking is not proper in Muslim countries. Also, uh, finger pointing like this is considered uh, as highly threatening and impolite in Asia. Uh, and so on. There is also the dressing, the dress codes. Malaysian businessmen use jacket and tie, while in Singapore, uh, just only a long sleeve shirt is normal for business attire. Also, eating. Importance of meals in business dealings, behavior at the table. Uh, for example, in French business transactions usually take place at a lunch or dinner table. Chinese have banquets, like a large uh, table full of uh, food and drinks and so on. It's like a ceremony. And sometimes drinking a bank trade deals. Also, the timing is one of the etiquette uh, factors of the etiquette in the business uh, practices. Uh, how to control time. For example, signs for impatience, uh, like uh, looking at the watch and so on, are considered improper in many cultures. And the lengthy uh, preliminaries are usual in the Middle East. Uh, talking also importance of verbal communication. Uh, for example, silence, pauses are norm in China and Japan. This is the business etiquette. What about the business relations? When we talk about engaging, importance in this case given to establishing personal relationships in business transactions. For example, most of ASEAN uh, countries uh, privilege the uh, personalization of contracts before engaging in business transactions. Also contracting, which is importance given to overall uh, agreements on principles versus details. For example, legal contracting is the norm in the United States, while Broad brush agreements are considered satisfactory in Japan. The last thing in business practice is competition. When we look at the advantages, uh, the product technology versus the connections as a source of competitive advantage. Uh, in China, for example, connections, or what they call guanxi, are still a very important factor in competitive advantage. Also for supplying. Uh, preferences uh, given to friends and families in supply contracts. In Asia, for example, the notion of extended families implies that the preferential treatment will be given to families, friends for supply contracts. Not only in Asia, uh, I think also in Arab countries and Middle East uh, countries. So, uh, now we finished uh, our chapter about the uh, cross-cultural uh, global management uh, there is some uh, learning assignments uh, you can handle and uh, answer them and practice and also the keywords you have to uh, discover these uh, keywords uh, and the meaning of these uh, definitions of these terms which is very uh, critical and uh, important to have a conclusion uh, about this chapter so, thank you very much and good uh, bye and good luck.